Today I am broadcasting live from Mr. Waite's room. We'll see if the lighting works a little better in here. So let me know if you think the lighting is better in this room or in the last videos in my room. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I've changed it up from the black screen to the white screen. Also let me know in the comments down below which one you can see better. I really appreciate your feedback. Today we're going to be talking about verb problems. We have two different topics when we're talking about verb problems, things that we see a lot of errors in. The first is subject verb agreement, and the second one is inappropriate tense shifts, which is kind of hard to say fast. I dare you to try. First, we're going to talk about subject verb agreement. So subject verb agreement is when your noun and your verb have to match in number. Essentially, if you have a singular noun, you need a singular verb. If you have a plural noun, you need to have a plural verb. Some examples. My friend is or are going to the movies. Well, I know that my friend is singular, so I have to decide is is the singular verb or is are the singular verb. The little trick I like to use is I like to substitute the word he for singular nouns and they for plural nouns. I would say he is going to the movies, so I know that is is my singular verb. Another example would be if I changed the subject, or my noun, to a plural noun. My friends is or are going to the movies. So again, I have this plural noun, and I kind of already know if is is the singular, then are is going to be the plural. But let's substitute they for that subject, because I know that they is plural, and see what sounds right. I wouldn't say they is going to the movies. I would say they are going to the movies. Therefore, I know that are is my plural verb. Now, sometimes I have what I think might be a plural noun, but it's actually a singular noun. My family is a really good example of that. Now, families are made up of many people, but when I say my family, I'm really only talking about my one singular family, so I want to make sure in that case that I'm using that singular verb, which in this case would be is. Team is used like that a lot, or also class. Like, a class is made up of a lot of students, but if you're talking about my class, that's just one class. So be careful when you're using those nouns that might have multiple members. Think about if you are trying to refer to just the one single entity, like my team, or my class, or my family, or are you trying to refer to the many members, like the members of my family are going to the movies. Another thing that we have to watch out for when we're talking about subject and verb agreement are these words and and or. Sometimes we use those coordinating conjunctions to connect together our subjects and our nouns and sentences. So we need to make sure that we are using the appropriate verbs with the appropriate coordinating conjunctions. So first example, my sister and my dad. Well, when I have and, then I am making these plural. I'm making this subject plural. So if I say my sister and my dad is or are going to pick me up later, I need to choose my plural verb are because the and, again, makes this a plural subject. Now if I use the word or, this makes it a singular subject because I am saying my sister or my dad is going to pick me up later. Essentially I'm saying either one of them is going to pick me up later. I could take out my dad and just say my sister is going to pick me up later. Or I could take out my sister and just say my dad is going to pick me up later. The or makes it singular, the and makes it plural. I want to teach you a little trick for how to make regular verbs plural. So I'm not talking about irregular verbs here, verbs like is and are and have and has. Those are irregular. They don't count for this trick. But when you have just regular old verbs that follow the regular verb tense rules, it's actually really easy to make one singular or plural. Here's the trick. Plural verbs do not end in S. Singular verbs do end in s. It is like the exact opposite of nouns. Switch a root, switch them around. The noun dog is singular, does not have an s. One dog. Now if I want to say the dog meets his new owner, that singular verb meets has an s on the end. Now if I want to talk about more than one dog, dogs, plural, with an s on the end because it's a noun, and I say the dogs meet their new owners, notice that that verb meet the plural verb for dogs doesn't have an S. My brother pick or picks me up from school. Well, brother is singular, no S on the end. So the verb 
does need an S on the end to make it singular. I know it's weird. It's like totally opposite of like anything that's ever going on in your brain about plurals, but it's just the, the, the rule for verbs. So my brothers pick or picks me up from school. You wouldn't say my brothers picks me up from school. You say my brothers pick me up from school. Plural noun, plural verb with no S. Okay, so let's talk about tense shifts. It is incorrect to change the tense of verbs within a sentence or a passage without like a really good reason. And I'll show you in a minute a good reason to do so. But we call this an inappropriate verb shift. And it happens all the time. I see this in your writing so, so, so often. So I really want you to start paying attention to if you're using the correct verb tense or not. And by verb tense, just as a quick refresher, I'm talking about past, present, and future tense. An example. Last week, I played ping pong with my daughter. So my verb there is played. It is past tense because it has an ED. I'm gonna add to that sentence. Last week, I played ping pong with my daughter and she beats me. Well, beats is present tense. It is not past tense. The past tense of beat is beat. It's an irregular verb. So it should just say, Last week I played ping pong with my daughter and she beat me. When Charlie jumps on Spot, Spot hissed and cried like a baby. Charlie and Spot are my cats and Charlie jumps on Spot all the time and Spot is like twice the size of Charlie, yet he like fusses about it whenever Charlie jumps on him and we wanna say things like, Spot, just sit on him, He'll, you'll be fine. Anyways, I digress. So Charlie jumps on Spot. Jumps makes this a present tense verb. So when Charlie jumps on Spot, Spot hissed and cried. Well, hissed and cried are past tense. This really should say hisses and cries. They should all be the same tense. Sometimes it is actually okay to change verb tenses, especially when we have conversations and dialogue. As an example, I look back at Lauren and say, that's all present tense. I'm doing it right now. I look back at Lauren and say, Remember when you kicked my booty in ping pong last week? Well, you won't be so lucky this time. So this is dialogue. I am directly quoting somebody, well, myself in this case. So it's okay to switch to the past tense here because I'm referring to something that happened in the past. So I'm in the present referring through dialogue to something I said in the past. And again, if it's a direct quote, you wouldn't change what the person said. You would keep it in the tense in which they said it the first time. Well, that is it for verb problems. Hope you enjoyed Mr. Waite's room. Again, let me know what you thought about the room, the lighting, and the background of the screen in the comments below so I can continue to try to make these videos better and better and better. Also, if you caught the error that was back in the very first slide before I quickly changed it on you, um, let me know and I'll give you stamps in class tomorrow. Hope you have a great night and I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you later, alligators.